So I'm back from Florida. If you didn't catch those two episodes, they're the last two episodes I put out. And I've just come back just in time for the stripers. The schoolie stripers are in, and so are the herring. The herring are stacked in the river. There's so much bait. Everything's eating it. So here's a little video of the when I filmed the herring last year. Came up to the waterfall and uh, the dam. And all the fish are trying to push up. Check it out. So as we're going through the river and the harbors, we're trolling these plastic swim shad and uh, whether you're casting it or trolling it, I mean, it's basically trying to look like one of these herring. And on the fish finder, you can see these schools of herring. So when you see those, a lot of times you'll see a bigger little boomerang down there and that's likely a striper eating all the herring. So on this trip, it's kind of an after work impromptu trip. I'm on a lobster boat and I'm just trying to catch that first striper of the year. Oh, got one. Got one? Yep. Oh, I was just going to say, we're going to have to reel it up. Oh my. Well, I'm going to slow this video way down so we can appreciate this fish. This is my first striped bass of the season. It's around 26 inches and is considered a schoolie. Schoolies are the smaller stripers that migrate up fastest and, and earliest. And uh, you can catch them around May. And then as the weeks go on, you get the 30 inch fish, the 40 inch fish. And if you ever want to find out what fish are near you, I would suggest you go to onthewater.com and check out their striper migration map. Now I'm not sponsored by them. I'm not affiliated with them. Nothing to do with them. This is not a promotion. It's just a good resource. Um, on the Water has got resources on how to catch stripers. It's got reports on where they're getting caught. And uh, the striper migration map is kind of pretty sweet. That's the, the best. Ooh, he was ready to go. <laughs> so I'm a catch and release guy with stripers. Uh, if I go out fishing for haddock or pollock, I'll keep those because I love eating those fish. But... Uh, for stripers, it's just kind of fun, you know, I like catching them and uh, it's a really good time and so I'm really happy to have caught my first ones in May. They're all schoolies, but they're all fun. As far as trolling speed goes, it really depends where you're fishing and how the tide's moving. But anywhere between two and three knots tends to work. And uh, once you find a speed that works, stick with it. Oh, there you go. Ooh, that's a big one. That's a good one. Yeah, I just said there was a fish down there. Yeah, that's the one. That must have been it. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh-oh. Trying to go for the... You can always tell who fishes for stripers by looking at their thumbs. I have what's called striper thumb. Basically, stripers have very small sandpaper-like teeth, so when they're kind of moving and your hand's in their lip, you get kind of shredded a little bit on your thumbs. So, if I ever see somebody out there that's got striper thumb, I kind of look at them and wink and say, you know where the fish are. Anyways, that's it for this one, guys. Like and subscribe, you know the drill, and I am out of here.